Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's MinMD Real Talk webinar, Vacuum Erection Device Online Clinic. My name is Austin Hunt, and I'll be your moderator for this event. I work on the marketing team here at MinMD, and we're excited that you're joining us today. Before we get started, we have a short disclaimer that we need to review. The health and medical information provided during this webinar, as well as the questions and responses from the webinar providers, are solely for informational purposes. This content is not intended to take the place of advice or treatment from health professionals. Nothing presented in the webinar is intended to be used for medical evaluation, diagnosis, or treatment. It is not intended to substitute for your relationships with your own healthcare and pharmaceutical providers. Always seek the advice of your healthcare provider before beginning any new treatment or if you have questions regarding a medical condition. All right, with that being noted, I'm pleased to introduce today's presenter, Dr. Zachary Koloff. Dr. Koloff is a board certified urologist who specializes in erectile dysfunction, men's sexual health, and urologic cancers, uh, including prostate, bladder, and kidney cancers. And he's located in Winchester, Massachusetts. Today, he's going to cover VED device assembly, penile reconditioning, VED use for sexual activity, penile rehabilitation for post prostate treatment, and then hold a live QA to close out the webinar. Now, over to our presenter, Dr. Koloff. The stage is yours. All right, thanks, Austin. Hey, I'm Zach Koloff. Uh, I'm a urologist. I work outside of Boston in uh, Winchester as part of uh, Leahy Health Systems uh, uh, Urology Outreach in Winchester, Massachusetts. So, you know, as Austin did a really uh, nice job uh, introducing me, and I do appreciate the invitation to talk to you guys today. Um, I, I, I'm a general urologist. I see pretty much all patients uh, for the most part, but I have a particular interest in these topics that he mentioned here. You know, the, um, they, I think they're intertwined a lot, as is true for a lot of men, men's health, uh, the urologic cancers and uh, sexual function in men's health. Uh, are really closely intertwined. So it's a particular interest of mine to kind of walk that line with my patients. And um, I think uh, MenMD, I once again appreciate you guys having me out here, but uh, I think you guys do a really good job of education for our patient population, uh, providing resources, of helping patients, and obviously providing access for a lot of patients. So um, you know, I, I think that the polls that you guys just uh, submitted are kind of interesting for a few reasons. Hopefully, we'll touch on a little bit of that today. But one of them is, you know, how long, how chronic erectile dysfunction is for most men. Um, you know, the definitions of erectile dysfunction are pretty subjective for various people. Some people wouldn't say they have a problem, but if you really kind of uh, push them about it. I think uh, most people will admit that at various points in their lives, uh, they struggle with the you know sexual function and with uh, achieving and maintaining erections. Um, and so for most people, three or more years, I think is a, is a pretty uh, standard answer. I think most people have been struggling with it for a while before they start to seek help like you guys are doing for yourselves today. So that's great that you're here. Um, Regarding uh, the proportion of you that I think two thirds of you guys have tried vacuum devices before. So that's really cool for me that you're here now because if you were doing perfectly and you had nothing to improve on related to the use of your vacuum device, I don't think you'd be here today. Um, so hopefully you guys learn a little bit about this uh, and can get some questions answered with me today. Um, so let's move along the presentation a little bit. Uh, you know, I think the, the most important thing to, to know uh, regarding the whole process is that it's really complicated. I, I talk to patients a lot about, uh, you know, when, when men are young, especially, uh, you know, in general pop culture, I think, you know, if the wind blows the right way, men are expected to have this perfect on-demand erection that stays 100% and is useful for whatever you need it for. And then... Don't have to think twice about it and it just works perfectly but in actuality it's an incredibly complex process um, it requires multiple nerve systems um, it requires healthy blood vessels both arteries and veins and and then, you know obviously the brain plays a big role in this also um, in addition to nerve systems that you have no conscious control over as well um, so the way the process works um, initially um, is essentially, you know, kind of brain down in most settings, um, you know, it needs arousal, needs some type of trigger to start the process. Um, but ultimately, the nerves are uh, signaling the uh, blood vessels within the penis to uh, counterintuitively relax. Uh, the, the arteries should relax to 
engorge and to um, dilate and take more blood in within the penis. So, you know, while it starts with the neurologic system, it becomes vascular, obviously, very quickly. Um, the, the penis is actually a really interesting organ for a lot of reasons, but the, the most interesting concept there um, in point four is once those arteries engorge and the, the penis actually has a lot more blood flow, the, the way an erection stays functional is essentially the arteries being on the inside but the veins kind of being around the outside within these erectile bodies, when the center of it engorges, it essentially clamps off the veins so that the blood stays within the penis and stays rigid and stays hard. Um, so this is a really complex process. Um, and as you can see, and we'll kind of talk about in a few minutes, if you have problems, medical problems or otherwise with any part of the nerves, the blood vessels, or the anatomy that's required for this process, um, things start to not become as um, effective as they once were. Um, just briefly, there's a lot of causes of erectile dysfunction. So a popular question that I get in the office is, uh, you know, what might be causing this problem that I'm having here? Um, and there's so many things, uh, pretty much anything that can affect any of that anatomy, like we just mentioned. Um, increasing age associated with increasing risk of erectile dysfunction. Obviously, the brain is intimately uh, correlated to you know, erectile function and, and sophisticatedly kind of uh, intertwined in this whole process. So anything that might be affecting the brain side, whether it's, you know, uh, anxiety, depression, distraction in the moment, or kind of ongoing stressors that might not necessarily be at the forefront of your mind at the time, but probably kind of deeply rooted within uh, the intimacy uh, process might affect the quality of the erection. Obviously, uh, we're pretty well known, but diabetes, high, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, any type of cardiovascular disease, heart disease, blood vessel disease, all of that, of course, will affect the quality of the nerves and the quality of the blood vessels within the penis. A lot of medications can interact with uh, quality of erections, and uh, um, you know, common one that people talk about are antidepressants or SSRIs, but so many other medications can interact with this as well, so it's definitely worth talking to a healthcare professional if you're concerned that any of your medications might be involved uh, uh, with the erectile problems you're having. Uh, prior surgeries, of course, uh, prostatectomy obviously be, being a big one, but any pelvic surgery, spinal surgery, or vascular surgeries do carry risk of erectile problems. Um, neurologic diseases, again, we talked about how important the nerve systems are. Hormone issues like low testosterone, um, and obviously bad habits, so alcohol, tobacco, drug use, things like that um, um, can affect erectile function. Lots of treatments, and hopefully if you guys are have already sought help or you're in the process of seeking help or you're thinking about talking to someone about it, there's a lot of things that can be offered for you. Um, working on the mental side of it with psychotherapy, and there are a lot of very quality uh, sexual health therapists who specialize in this as well. Um, we do know that exercise, weight loss, healthy lifestyle, Mediterranean diet, and a lot of kind of conservative behavioral management things can improve independently of anything else, the quality of your erections. Um, a lot of oral medications such as sildenafil or tadalafil, injectable medications, um, of which there are several types and combinations and solutions, uh, intraurethral suppositories. Um, if you are hypogonadal, meaning having a low testosterone, sometimes supplementing testosterone can improve erections, although that's not always a black and white issue there. It's a little more complicated. Um, combining these treatments is obviously something that a lot of men do. Um, kind of the last line would be a surgical implant, if nothing else worked, but of course it's right there at the bottom. Today's topic is the vacuum erection device, which has a lot of uses both for erections, but also you know, penile reconditioning, penile rehabilitation as well. Um, and we'll kind of focus on that today. So here's a, here's a, a photo of the uh, vacuum erection device. This one's from uh, Owen Mumford, who I believe are supporting us tonight. Um, but what is it? Um, well, um, it's been around for a long time. Uh, it's been approved for treatment of erectile dysfunction for almost, uh, actually exactly 40 years. Um, I usually call it a VED with patients who are more familiar with it, but the goal of it is essentially to create a vacuum within 
within a cylinder which has the penis in it and kind of pull blood flow into the penis to engorge the penis. Um, so holoplastic tube is placed over the penis, some type of mechanism to create a vacuum uh, uh, chamber in here. In the you know important parts that a lot of guys don't realize, and I'll kind of show you a demonstration a little bit later, but using the properly sized rings and bands to kind of hold blood flow in there after um, the, the blood vessels engorge and after the penis uh, becomes uh, dilated, essentially is important to lock in the blood flow inside the penis and keep it rigid for use. Uh, for penile reconditioning, um, the goal of that, and we'll kind of get into that, is kind of pulling blood into the penis to kind of flush those tubes, make sure that uh, uh, blood flow within those arteries kind of resumes, but the goal is not to maintain an erection for a longer period of time. Therefore, constriction bands are typically not used in those settings. Um, I, I think a vacuum device is incredibly effective. Uh, a lot of guys ask me if this is going to work for them. And I, I think that's, that's a complicated uh, answer because the short answer is yes. I, I think over 90% of men are going to find some success with the vacuum device, but it's going to take work and it's going to take trial and error. And it's going to take, you know, uh, you know, essentially getting used to it and using it in the right settings before I think a man would uh, call it a successful use of the DVD. To that point, uh, essentially it fits just like an ortho uh, orthopedic device. Essentially it needs to be calibrated to your anatomy and to your lifestyle. So essentially there's a lot of components, uh, just to give you a few examples, different size uh, rings and bands. And essentially you gotta find the right fit for you before you think it, uh, before you find uh, a fit that works essentially. So they're made up of these different components that are changed or adjusted and can be adjusted for the same patient over time as things change within your body. Um, other orthopedic devices require fitting and changing and essentially uh, we have to expect the same for the vacuum device as well if you wanna optimize your performance. So, Again, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, but the VED has a lot of different components. So there is the pump head. So this is something that's actually going to be generating the vacuum. Um, this is an electric component. This is not the device that's being shown right there, which I believe is Owen Mumford. This is actually from uh, Augusta Medical. This is the Thoma, the Soma therapy system. This is a battery powered unit. This is a manual pump unit. The penile tube is important. Uh, has to be made out of a, a quality plastic, smooth edges, and uh, obviously the right size to fit patients. Uh, but what's uh, you know pretty important is essentially the the, tr the transfer of seal sleeves. So essentially creating a good seal within the tube for a man of various uh, you know essentially girth uh, penis is really important because you don't want the vacuum uh, pressure to be leaking around the penile shaft there. Um, we like to use a lot of lubrication with uh, any of this, water-based lubricants. Uh, this is an example of one that's kind of given with this. Uh, but essentially, the lubricant creates a, uh, a watertight seal there to keep the vacuum in. So the lubricant being really important. Um, sizing, the rings are very important. So there's, uh, in the diagram number five, there is a sizer that's provided. But essentially, finding the right ring, which I feel like is a, uh, often a big hurdle for patients to be able to be comfortable, but be tight enough to um, provide the job that it's supposed to do, which is to hold the blood in the penis, maintain an erection um, once the penis is engorged. The ED learning curve, um, incredibly, um, important here. I would say the most successful patients who use a VED are those who practice, who try different, possibly different devices, but definitely different components of the devices until they find the right mix for that patient. I think those uh, successful patients are also patients who you know, incorporate their partner potentially into this process as well, um, because this is a learning curve and it's often more than just the patient that's kind of using the device. And it's something where the most successful patients are the ones who have, you know, been open that in the beginning, they might not be graded at it. Uh, basically, it's a skill to master it. Um, you have to 
have a desire to pick up this new skill and you have to commit the time to do that, experiment, try different components, and essentially be willing to not be as slick with it at first, but over time be, become a lot better with it. Um, I, I think there are very few patients that hit it right off the bat. They buy their device and they're as good as they're ever going to be with it and don't have any hiccups along the way. So I think kind of planning uh, that you're going to have to take some time to get used to it before you're successful with it is probably the best approach. Um, Consistently creating your full snapshot erection does take a few minutes, so it's not perfect on demand, and you keep practicing until you get slick and be able to use it the way you need to do it. And, uh, you know, essentially the last point is about reconditioning, which we'll focus on a little bit more on the next few slides. But essentially, if it's been a long time since you've had really good erections or you've struggled with other management options, whether it be pills or injections, and you're just haven't had good erections in a while, well, even if the device is right, even if you found the right components that work well for you, I think ultimately it's still going to take a little bit of time for those blood vessels to start filling up again, start getting stretchy again, and start uh, working the way you want them to work again. And that's kind of the concept of reconditioning to try to increase blood flow and to uh, work to get those erections better and better, even if you found the right equipment for you. Before you start, familiarize yourself with the contents provided in your Rapport Classic Vacuum Therapy device system. You will find the Constriction Ring Sizing Guide at the back of your Instruction for Use booklet. To use your Rapport Classic device, you will first need to determine the correct Constriction Ring size. You have received five Constriction Rings with your Rapport Classic device. Select a slot which fits firmly around the base of your flaccid, non-erect penis. Try the largest size first. Each slot has a ring size marked above it, which corresponds to the ring you require. The constriction ring is placed at the base of your penis next to your body, and choosing the correct ring size is important to maintain the erection for the necessary period. Once you have selected the right ring size, you're ready to begin. There are two transfer sleeves provided with your Rapport Classic system. Depending on the size of your penis, you should choose which of the two is likely to be the most suitable. Remember, your erect penis will need to be withdrawn through the transfer sleeve. One of the transfer sleeves included with your Rapport Classic system is already attached to the penile tube. If this is the correct size transfer sleeve for you, you can leave it in place. If not, remove it and fit the remaining transfer sleeve. Fit the loading cone onto the transfer sleeve and apply a little lubricating jelly included with your system on top of the cone. Holding the constriction ring by the outer handles, simply stretch and pull the ring down the loading cone until it slips onto the transfer sleeve. Make sure the constriction ring is located on the flat groove at the center of the transfer sleeve. The constriction ring is now mounted and ready for use. Before continuing, make sure you use the lubricating jelly to lubricate the end of the transfer sleeve. Also, lightly lubricate the penis to prevent it from sticking to the inside of the penile tube during insertion, or while using the pump. The pump head has two small pegs on each side above the orange ring. These should be positioned into the two grooves on top of the penile tube. The two parts are then locked together with a twist so that the two pegs slot down and locate at the lower end of the groove. If these two parts are locked together correctly, it will ensure the unit is sealed tight enough to create a vacuum inside the penile tube. To ensure a vacuum will be created, insert only your penis into the penile tube and apply slight pressure to the seal with the transfer sleeve against your body at the base of the penis. To ensure that a vacuum is created, it may be necessary to groom the hair at the base of the penis. Make sure the constriction ring on the transfer sleeve is in the correct position with the handles to the top and bottom. Continue pumping slowly to create the erection. If you feel any pain, stop pumping and press the release button to eliminate the vacuum. You can try again when you're ready. 
pumping slowly is most beneficial. When the desired erection has been achieved, continue to hold the tube tightly against your body. Ease the constriction ring off the transfer sleeve and onto the base of your penis. Press the release button to lower the vacuum pressure and remove the penile tube. With the constriction ring in place, sexual intercourse can be accomplished. If a condom is to be worn, it should be put on as a last step. Please ensure that the lubricating jelly used with the system is compatible with your condom type. To remove the constriction ring after intercourse, simply grasp the outer handles to stretch the central ring. As the blood is released from the penis, it will decrease in size and the ring may be easily removed. Do not wear the constriction ring for more than 30 minutes at a time and allow a minimum of 60 minutes between uses. Please consult your instruction booklet for a comprehensive set of instructions, safety precautions, warnings, troubleshooting and cleaning instructions. So good video, uh, touches on a few interesting points. That's a different system than the one I just showed you um, here, but uh, similar concepts, similar components to the device as well. Um, a, few, a few key ones that they kind of mentioned that I just really want to make sure hit home. One is the lubrication use, making sure that everything is lubed up enough where things slide easily and feel watertight when you do things. Uh, when you do actually pull blood into the penis, but essentially making sure that the actual uh, constriction ring is lubricated as well so it can slide back and forth easily. Uh, making sure that you're not wearing the ring for long periods of time. Uh, unfortunately, there's a few that are somewhat scarred into my memory of patients that used bands for much longer than they should have or forgot to take it off and fell asleep. Definitely uh, not using for longer than 30 minutes is a key thing to, to keep in mind. So shift and focus a little bit on penile reconditioning that we talked about a little bit. Um, penile reconditioning, I, I also use the terms uh, penile rehabilitation, particularly after surgery uh, for radical prostatectomy uh, is something that uh, I do a lot of. So uh, essentially the concept here is that morning and nocturnal erections are, are really normal parts of being a young, healthy man. Um, we have three to five, if not more, possibly some people, some studies have shown seven or more natural erections throughout the night. Um, and it, it essentially works uh, blood flow into the penis, this oxygen rich blood stretches and reconditions both the blood vessels, but also just general, the, generally the tissues within the penis. And for men who have not been sexually active in a long time or no longer experience natural erections or even unnatural erections with with uh, with medications or otherwise um, we think that kind of stretching the penis uh, pulling uh, healthy blood into the penis is really important to start to you know make sure that the, the blood vessels are ready to handle good blood flow um, so men with medical conditions experiencing ED um, lose these erections and this is uh, kind of a way to try to mimic that process again so Usually, some, some uh, providers usually uh, say at least every other day, but I know some providers that actually have you do it almost every day, but for short periods versus every other day for slightly longer periods, where essentially the same process of using the vacuum device is used just without the band. So keeping the, the vacuum device against your body, uh, pulling blood into the penis, letting it engorge until you know it feels like a fairly good erection, and then releasing the pressure after a period of time and letting things settle. Wait, wait a couple minutes and kind of do it again. Um, so, so this is a standard recommendation from from Men MD putting it here three to five days a week for approximately 20 to 30 minutes uh, each time. Not saying that you're holding it there for 30 minutes, but maybe giving yourself a break after a couple minutes and then restarting the process. But I know some providers who actually have you do it just, you know, for short periods of time, pulling blood in for 20 seconds, releasing it, 20 seconds, releasing it, and essentially just kind of working out the penile tissues and the penile blood vessels as well.
Um, and after a couple of weeks, uh, a lot of men do start to see that when they need their erections, when they're using their either the vacuum device for erectile function when sexually active, or even when using other um, medications, both oral or injections, um, things just work a little bit better because those blood vessels are used to gorging. Um, but every man is different. This can be helpful for a lot of people right away, and sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Um, I mentioned after prostatectomy, the concept of penile rehabilitation. So something that you know, I'm sure a, a proportion of you at least experienced uh, was, was prostate cancer, which led to surgery. And even with a full nerve sparing surgery, uh, erections take a huge hit, definitely at first, but that recovery can take up to honestly a year and a half, if not longer, to get back to wherever you're going to be after that surgery. But something that can help men get their erections back as early as possible and kind of mix data to suggest how they're going to end up, whether they're going to get back to good erections, is starting to do something like this, possibly with medications, uh, to help pull blood flow into the penis. I tell guys, even two weeks after surgery, you know, just pull it yourself. Try to, kind of, try to pull blood flow there, even without any romance, no intimacy, no sexuality to it, but just try to pull blood into the penis. And a lot of guys are buying vacuum devices. Um, and I think more and more as my practice has evolved and I've been dealing uh, with a lot more prostate cancer, therefore a lot more patients who are having erectile dysfunction after prostate cancer treatments, um, this is the, the vacuum device is something that's incredibly helpful. So here's a, uh, perfect. Forgot that this slide was even in there, but essentially like we were talking about, essentially holding it in for a couple minutes, maintaining that seal, um, and essentially you can see where uh, the seal kind of meets the, the body of this person and having that be a little lubricated also just to make sure there's a nice watertight seal there. And then repeat this process three to five times for a total of 15, 10 to 15 minutes per training session uh, versus doing shorter stints but doing a lot more reps. I'll leave it on the slide just for a second if anyone didn't get a chance to read it yet. And again, there's lots of resources online about this as well and, and some helpful videos if you want to learn more about this one as well. So the best candidates for a vacuum device, essentially any man with erectile dysfunction of any sort, of any cause, essentially could be a candidate for the vacuum device. Uh, whether it's someone who's trying to get erections sufficient for intercourse or maintain erections sufficient for intercourse, which I think increasingly we realize is a, a problem for some guys. They can get erections, but just can't maintain them particularly well. Um, we talked about penile reconditioning a lot and penile rehabilitation after surgery, but also if you haven't had good erections or good nocturnal erections for a while, um, it's really helpful for those guys. Um, men who only report partial erections, even with other therapies, we kind of touched on as well, the, the vacuum device can kind of get over that hump and you can kind of mix and match different treatments, which I think is a really effective way for men to achieve their satisfaction levels that they're uh, looking for. Um, and then again, after prostate cancer procedures. Uh, so you see a little quote there from a, a study in the Journal of Sexual Medicine that creating multiple erections in one setting is a unique advantage of vacuum therapy that other rehab methods can't achieve. So essentially, the vacuum device is an on-demand erection whenever you want it, whether that's for use with sexual function, for, for sexual activity and sexual function, or for rehabilitation. Getting erections when you want them essentially is a huge advantage of the vacuum device. Side effects. I would say the, the, the most common, it's not really a side effect, but the most common issue that men have with a vacuum device is that it's just not going to work for them right away. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, but I think it's important to hit home the point that it might not work the way you want it to right away. It might take some trial and error practice, possibly changing components or being resized and getting good with it. But that's not exactly a side effect, but it's the most common thing I hear. Um, usually using the constriction band at the base of the penis does apply some pressure there. So with orgasm, with ejaculation, um, some men don't see much come out. This is not a concerning thing at all. And essentially the next time the man urinates, it kind of clears the tube. 
um, there can be some discomfort associated with or some numbness uh, associated with use of the device also. And if this is something that's happening to you frequently, I would uh, consider to resize or definitely talk to um, uh, a patient representative or healthcare provider about the safety associated with it and things you might be able to do to kind of help here as well. Um, again, MedMD provides some resources about uh, teaching proper technique and just making sure you're not using constriction band for longer periods of time like we talked about before. Using a vacuum device if you're on blood thinners or anticoagulants um, is sometimes discussed as a possible risk of causing bruising or what's called hematomas of the penis, uh, rarely. Um, I have never seen this to be a problem or I would think it is safe for most patients who even are on uh, blood thinners, but it's definitely worth talking about with your healthcare provider. So summary slide here a little bit, the vacuum device essentially works for any type of erectile dysfunction and in 90% of patients or possibly more, um, if you take some time to get used to it. Um, it works in combinations with other treatment. Uh, we didn't really talk about it today, but you know, I know you have some questions. It's, it's a common um, question to ask about Peyronie's disease, which is essentially a, a penile curvature disease. Um, and there are some um, providers who think that penile stretching and, and you know, essentially kind of pulling blood flow, but trying to pull it in a straight way. Um, it does help with men uh, rehabilitating from Peyronie's disease or in combination with other treatments as well sometimes. Um, essentially, Peyronie's disease does often go hand in hand with erectile dysfunction, so penile rehabilitation for this use is helpful. Uh, we talked about how important this is after prostatectomy, but also other pelvic surgeries, or prostate cancer treatments, or pretty much anyone who's not having regular erections. Um, and I do not use it like this in most of my patients, but I know other providers who do. Even if a penile prosthesis is placed, which is essentially kind of end of the line treatment for erectile dysfunction, some men still use a vacuum device to kind of get, get the other tissues that were not surgically altered to engorge more and to lengthen more and to get wider. Um, the device is inexpensive and safe, but I do recommend, and we'll talk about it a little bit, probably, uh, buying a quality product. You can see, uh, you know, how many components there are to it, and these do have to be quality. And I would say also buying this device uh, through um, a, a company or with resources who will be able to help you out if it's not working great for you and having some, some patient representatives kind of help troubleshoot if it's not working great, I think is a, a really important concept that, uh, you should consider when you're buying a device. Vacuum device right here. So components here include cylinder, if you guys didn't really see it before when I was demonstrating it, um, making sure that it's out of high quality material here, smooth caliber on the inside. Um, these are some, some uh, sizing chambers essentially. Uh, every man kind of needs a different uh, size here for the entry, but uh, using water-based lubricant around the entry site, which uh, will then be pressed against the base of the body with the kind of penis in here and this against the body, a little lubricant creating a watertight seal right there. The actual uh, mechanism by which the vacuum is created um, can either be battery powered like this example or manual like this one here. And just to give you an example, I'm just gonna kind of use my hand and you might hopefully be able to hear this and just generally making a little bit of a vacuum here and then when I pull my hand off you can kind of hear the the uh, the seal that's being broken there um, manual pump same thing it doesn't take a whole lot of pumps just a few is usually sufficient um, uh, but essentially pump it until you feel like you're engorged and not having particular discomfort that was probably about five pumps there and still you, know, you can see the ring that's kind of making on my finger here um, the other components, at least to this device, this, uh, taking out these rings for a second, but this helps load the actual constriction band uh, with some lubrication onto the device. So kind of getting it on there before you get going, a lot easier if you have some lubrication, taking the cone off and essentially being able to, once things are the, you know, rigidity that you're looking for, be able to slide the band using two hands onto the penis and then be able to remove the actual vacuum device and just uh, just keeping the band on the penis there. 
Uh, water soluble lubricant is your best friend for this one for sure. So that's kind of roughly how the device works. And I don't know if that looked easy or if that looked hard, but I will stress it again. Uh, it does take practice. It takes practice to be savvy with it. I think the patients who are most successful when they're uh, intimate with their partners are the ones who incorporate into foreplay, uh, use their partners to kind of help them out and uh, you know, go through this process with their partners as well. All right. I think with that will, yeah, with that we'll transition into the uh, Q and A portion of the event. Um, so I guess the first question that we got actually during the event, um, someone wanted to know if you had a recommendation of manual versus the automatic. Is there one that's a preference, or is it more about um, you know the individual person's needs? Yeah, I, I definitely think that second point, uh, individual person's needs. I think you know price points. Probably, I don't know this, Austin, you can correct me, but probably the battery power tends to be a touch more expensive. You just press one button and you're going, but you could see how easy it was just to kind of pump with one hand with this device and it creates the same result. Um, a little frustrating that this one will run out of battery and sometimes that happens at an inopportune time. Uh, I've never heard of someone breaking the, the manual mechanism of any of these devices, so, you know, the, fail safe on that one is if you can squeeze it you can do it uh, yeah. gotcha okay yeah and that same person wanted to follow up they want to know if uh, a manual approach gives you more refinement or better control versus a battery powered one i don't necessarily think so i mean this is pretty savvy that you can press the button and release it whenever you need it and it's pretty quick so you can tell that you can kind of customize that however you need it um i think Again, this is part of the trial and error. You're going to get good with whatever device you end up uh, going with, as long as it's a quality device. Um, but you know, some I think some people shy away from the manual devices, thinking it's a little cumbersome, or they might need to be using two hands a lot more. But this is really easy, also. So I, I think as long as you practice with your device, you're comfortable with it. I think you're going to have the same outcome. Okay. All right, uh, next question here. Why, when I pump, does it sometimes pull a testicle into the tube? It's very painful when it happens. Interesting. <clears throat> Every man has different anatomy. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes the skin can kind of pull from the penile skin to the scrotal skin and kind of pull that in as well. Uh, for those patients, it's going to be a recurring theme with my answers, but definitely working on making sure the components are the correct components for you, the sizing is correct. And definitely for this patient, I would recommend, you know, when when pumping, essentially use the other uh, other hand to kind of keep the scrotal skin out of the way as it's pumping in there um, and making sure that even when flaccid, when, um, when, your, when your penile shaft is going into the cylinder, just making sure that uh, you're not accidentally grabbing scrotal skin with that as well. All right, uh, next question here. Um, is there any danger from using a vacuum pump too frequently? As long as it's used safely, I don't think there's a danger to using it too frequently. Uh, making sure that it's not a painful erection when it's happening, making sure you're not having numbness, pain, or bruising uh, associated with using it as well. Um, but again, you know, I, I don't know if there's many studies or much data about um, long-term use for penile reconditioning, uh, but definitely in the short term, in the weeks and months, uh, it can be really effective. Doing it every day for years and years and years, as long as you're using it safely, um, I don't think that that would be pre present a particular danger to you, but um, just make sure you're consulting with a healthcare provider if you do think that something seems off. All right. Uh, next question here. Are there, we got kind of a two-parter here. Are there vacuum devices that are FDA approved? Are there devices that aren't approved by the FDA? I actually don't know the answer to that one. I don't believe the FDA approves these devices. You might be able to correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, there are, actually the FDA might approve them. I know that there are certain criteria that make this a, a safe device. I I believe it's 17 millimeters per mercury or, or less, um, having smooth contours to the actual chamber. Um, I actually don't know the answer to that one. Austin, do you? 
Um, you know what? I don't either, but I could find out and I can chime in a little bit later. Yeah, that'd be great. Appreciate okay. that. All right. And then the second part of that question. Um, so what's the difference between the pumps at a sex shop and what Minim D sells? So I you guess know, that's I think, around the yeah, price of them as well. Yeah, I mean, you can go on any website, Amazon being a great example, but any sex shop, you can find cheaper devices. Um, these are provided by, you know, medical systems, uh, medical companies that provide medical grade equipment. It's usually not just the vacuum device that most of these companies are producing. So they're, they're high quality products. They're, they're made from, you know, essentially materials that I would trust. And so often they actually come with the backing of whichever medical supplier provided uh, that service. And I think that that's something that a lot of people overlook. I, I'll be honest, I'm, a, I'm prone to buy sometimes the cheaper item if it seems like they're equal. But one thing that I would really encourage you guys to have is, is you know, a warranty, uh, some patient representatives to help you out and troubleshoot if you need. Uh, a way to, you know, maybe find other rings that might be available if whatever's provided in your kit is not sufficient to provide you with the outcome you want. Um, so while you might be successful with something you find on Amazon or a sex shop, I don't know if I would trust those devices. The devices that I have used and tried and honestly played around with a little bit from medical device companies, they work, they're consistent. And I just know these, especially men MD guys, but there's a lot of other men's health companies that stand by the products as well and are so crucial to making your life successful if you if you do get a device. Absolutely. Um, all right, next question here. I'm 85 years old. Am I too old to use VED? That's a good question. I, absolutely not. I mean, we talked about a few factors which sometimes are worth talking to your healthcare provider about, like if you're anticoagulated on blood thinners, um, if you have the dexterity to be able to do it safely, meaning that you're not going to pull your scrotum or testicle into the device, if you're going to be able to release the pressure if needed, um, if it's not working for you or if it's painful to understand when it's time to stop using it. But age is absolutely not a factor in, I think, your ability to use these devices. I have plenty of patients in their 80s and a few in their 90s, absolutely, who use the devices and that's important for them for whatever uh, purpose they want to use it for. If it works for you and if you're using it safely, there's no age limit on this, absolutely not. All right, uh, next question here is asking about the proper technique to um, transition the ring after pumping up. So they say, how are you supposed to properly use an erection ring after removing the VED? So I don't know if, I think the video sort of showed this, but I don't know if you can kind of demonstrate it with the device like that transition. Yeah, I wish uh, I wish I had a uh, big phallus here, big penis that I could kind of show you guys a little bit better. Um, but for an example, if if you loaded it with the comb and this device, and the penis was in here, it's pressed against your body and essentially holding against your body. It, it this is part of the problem. Uh, the process it takes a little bit of uh, uh, trial and error, but you know, making sure that it's sufficiently lubricated so when it's time, you can slide it off using uh, one of the grips here. All of them look a little bit different depending on the company and be able to slide it down off of it onto the base of the penis that is actually you know, situated right there. Um, it, it's easier said than done for some people, but it does work eventually. Um, I'll be honest with you, hand up. Uh, when I started talking to patients about these in my office a few years ago, I needed to make sure that I knew how to use this just like you guys do. So actually I've, I've used demos before and I've, I've used them plenty to make sure that I can kind of troubleshoot some of these issues should they come up in my clinic with my patients. And that's one that you know, I would say of all, of all steps of the process, something that I struggled with a little bit when I was trying to figure out how to use the device you get good at it. You, you figure out how to do it. It's, it seems difficult because it seems like maybe you would need a third hand. You don't. You you figure it out and slide it as long as it's sized properly and the device is well lubricated. All right. I uh, got some feedback on the earlier question about the FDA. Yes, uh, since they are VED, they are FDA approved. So just means they're medical grade. 
But um, next question here for a patient uh, post radical prostatectomy who has some erection response, would this therapy add anything? Yeah, yeah, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Uh, penile rehabilitation. The earlier that you can get those blood vessels engorged and remember how they used to hold blood in the arteries of the penile tissue, um, the quicker your functional recovery will come. So a lot of patients have partial erections early on, but using the device early on can get you back to having the erections that you potentially will have long term a lot quicker. The data is a little less uh, strong to support if you take the same guy after surgery and how his erections are going to be, let's say, two, three years down the road. If he started using a vacuum device early on, is it going to be any different in a couple of years? Maybe, maybe not, but he will get back to good erections quicker than a guy who did not use it. And then, of course, you are having partial response right now that tells me you're not having the response you want. You're not having the kind of erection that might be sufficient. Um, therefore, vacuum device just purely to get the erection you want now rather than waiting to see how you're going to be eventually. Absolutely. Get, get working with it if it's something that interests you. All right. Uh, next question here is around combo therapy. Can a VED be used safely in conjunction with other therapies such as injections or PD5 medications, so pills? Yeah, absolutely. I have a lot of patients doing that. Um, patients who, even if they haven't figured out how the vacuum device works perfectly for them by themselves yet, sometimes even just taking a small dose of sildenafil, Viagra, or Tadalafil, Cialis, can get them over the hump. And sometimes even having some, some engorgement of the penis, either with oral medications or injectable medications prior to using the vacuum device uh, does help the vacuum device work better because for some men, they just need to kind of grow a little bit before the device really works for their anatomy. Conversely, the opposite is true. I know some patients who have trouble doing injections on themselves. Um, because the target area is too small or something along those lines, um, using the vacuum device to get some engorgement and then using the injection afterwards is a really good use for a lot of patients. It makes the actual administration of the injections a lot easier. All right. Uh, next question here. Does the uh, constriction band inhibit ejaculation at all? Yeah, um, mentioned in one of the slides, it can. Um, a tighter band can compress the urethra as well and therefore not allow the ejaculate to come out. Some men, after taking off the constriction band after use, will see a little bit of uh, discharge and some men won't see it and will urinate it out essentially sometime later, often not even being able to appreciate because it uh, kind of washes out with the urine uh, well. Um, there's a lot of men who experience um, an ejaculation where they don't really see anything come out or retrograde ejaculation where it falls back into the bladder um, at baseline. And this is common as you get older. It's common with medications. It's common after mm -hmm. procedures. Um, but if everything was working perfectly and then you used a vacuum device, sometimes the constriction band uh, will not allow the ejaculate to actually come out, but it should still feel like an orgasm. All right, uh, next question here. How firm should I expect my erection to be when using a VED? Mine have been inconsistent. I'm a new user and still practicing. Good, well, I mean, that's the key right there. That's great that you're still practicing. The firmness depends. I think almost every man has potential to get to kind of a full rigid erection. Um, and so I think that should be the goal. If you ever use it in a successful way and you've gotten that full erection, that's, I think, what you should be shooting for each time you use it, and I would keep practicing until you achieve that goal. Having said that, there's a lot of ways to be intimate or to use an erection that's not what you would consider, you know, 100% erection, the one that you had when you were young and you didn't have to think twice about. If you can get full enough to be able to enjoy yourself, I think that that qualifies it as a successful use of the device. All right, got an interesting question here. If I have a penile implant, can I still use a VED? If so, how often? Yeah, um, so I'm glad I put that in the slide. Um, definitely can. Um, you know, I would talk to your surgeon, absolutely, who put the device in and when they would feel safe with you using it, how far after 
after surgery, and long term, how often uh, they recommend using it. So I don't want to give firm criteria on this, but you absolutely can use it um, if your if your urologist thinks it's uh, appropriate to help potentially increase length while you're healing, uh, potentially uh, to increase girth while you're healing in long term. Um, as well as what some guys don't realize is when you put the penile prosthetic device in, it's really just filling up what we call the corporal bodies, the erectile bodies of the penis, but essentially the glands, the head of the penis, and some of the tissues surrounding and like the soft tissues surrounding those erectile bodies, they won't get hard the same way that the actual rigid corporal bodies do. If you use a vacuum device in addition, you would pull some blood flow into the penis, of course, the, or into the head of the penis and some of the surrounding tissues. So it can almost give guys even that more, uh, that much more feeling that they have a normal erection, even after surgery. All right. Uh, next question here. I'm having trouble getting a good seal with the device. Is shaving the pubic area required? I wouldn't say it's required, but I do recommend it for a lot of patients who are having the problem that you're having. I mean, you're looking for a watertight seal, however it can happen. So lubricant's helpful, sizing all the components is helpful, but sometimes right at the base of the penis where it meets the skin, if there are hairs, you're never going to get a watertight seal and you know, essentially you're never going to fully engorge, or if you do, sometimes it just leaks out and you lose the erection. Um, hair grows back. Play around with it a little bit and see if you do um, get a better result if you trim some of the, the hairs around, around the base of the seal. Absolutely. Um, all right, next question here. Will using a VED give me my natural erections back, or is this something I need to continue as long as I'm sexually active? Yeah, it's, you know, for, for penile reconditioning, it can help, but the concept of reconditioning, when patients who we recommend reconditioning for are patients that haven't had great natural erections. And usually, although there are a lot of causes, usually those are kind of chronic issues. And to expect normal spontaneous erections to come back if there's not a, a, a reversible cause, which there typically is not, um, is not an expected outcome after using the vacuum device. So it can help you maybe get through a hump, um, of you know, not getting great erections if something else is going on. Uh, but if you have some chronic uh, explanation of your erectile dysfunction and things just aren't working well long term, I wouldn't expect natural erections to come back. So it's probably one of the options that you would have for long term or, uh, erectile function. All right. Uh, no, we're coming up to the seven o'clock mark. So we're going to ask a handful more questions and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, so next, next question here, this person asks, I tried the blue pills, used an injection with Trimix and had no real success. Is it possible that the pump might work for me? Yeah, I see a lot of patients who do have that story and they've and we try to move away from this, but I think still think that the average patient with erectile dysfunction kind of progresses through the treatments. They might try one pill, then a different pill, and then different doses and different medications, because that's typically where patients start, maybe with their primary care doctors or urologists. Everything's laid out, but eventually, you know, trying something else for most patients, uh, like injections, probably the most common second step although vacuum devices are really good for a lot of patients. But vacuum devices, essentially, they don't rely on uh, essentially the medications getting to the penis. Essentially, it's a, it's, a, it's a plumbing issue. The blood flow is not coming to the penile tissues. All the blood flow is the penile tissues. They should be able to handle it. So there are a lot of patients that find success with the vacuum device who did not have success with other treatments. And there's a lot of patients who find success by mixing and matching treatments like we talked all right, uh, next question here. I fell asleep with my VED on three hours with an erection. Did I do any damage? It's a good question. Um, likely did not do any damage, but it could potentially cause a problem. If you're swelling tissues, especially, it sounds like if you had an erection that long, you probably had the constriction band on also. And this is concerning because you can develop swelling around the band and then essentially it cuts off blood flow to the to the skin and to the tissues of the penis. 
Um, it's unlikely to have caused long-term damage to the erectile function, uh, but that is the concern of the health of those tissues long-term. If you are engorging those tissues, cutting off blood supply temporarily, fine. But if you cut off blood supply long-term, you can uh, injure yourself that way. All right, good to know. Three minutes is, uh, is kind of the time that we give you. Yeah, absolutely. Three hours is a long time. Um, all right, next question here. Is it safe to use a VED in the shower? It should be safe to use in the shower. You know, the battery operated component probably not so, not so friendly with the water, uh, but essentially it's, you know, manual pumping. You might find that if you're wet, it might be a little tough to get that perfect seal, um, but try it out and see how it goes. All right, and the last question here, this is something uh, you brought up a little bit during the actual presentation, um, but they ask, what is your suggestion for how to introduce the VED to the bedroom? I'm tired of going to the bathroom and doing it myself. This is, I, I think if, uh, if, you, if people are still kind of listening at the very last question, I think this is one that I hit on a ton in my clinic because I think the most successful patients are the patients who incorporate it into the relationship with their partner incorporate it into foreplay make it exciting make it part of the the bedroom because there's no way to kind of live your whole life and discreetly use this thing and never have anyone know um, it's it's not something to be ashamed of it's a change in in the interaction potentially but a lot of my patients who are successful with it have found a way to make that change a positive and an additive uh, something exciting bedroom so um, definitely start by being open with your partner talking about it and kind of feeling things out from there but uh, definitely that's a great point to hit home on at the end of this those are the successful patients absolutely absolutely all right with that I'd like to uh, thank Dr. Koloff for taking the time to present today and we'd also like to thank everyone listening in for attending this MinMD Real Talk webinar. We hope it was informative and that you'll join us again in the future. If you'd like to learn more about BEDs, you have a few options. There are more resources in the Resource Center on minimd.com. Visit this page to view instructional videos, guides, expert articles, and much more. Uh, if you have a question and you'd like to speak with someone in person, you can call MinMD at 857-233-5837 or log into the password protected secure MinMD portal to schedule an appointment with a MinMD clinical case manager. And finally, i uh, got a lot of questions around this, um, but if you're interested in purchasing a VED or if you're interested in learning how much they cost, um, you can do so on the shop page in the MinMD portal by calling into our office at 857-233-5837. I'd like to thank everyone again for attending today's webinar and we will see you the next one.